Okay, a lot of you out there are probably wondering why I'm filming on a different camera. Well, let me tell you what happened. I had about 50% of part two of the bean canning video filmed, up almost to the point of putting it in the canner. And this is why I will never ever film a multi-part video on that iPod Touch ever again. You have to juggle all that crap around. First one, you gotta upload it so that there's enough memory for the second one. And when you splice them together and you make a project, you have to get rid of all those ones that you used for your source video so that uh, you have room, you know, for the next one and for the output. Well, I got rid of the source videos thinking that I had already spliced them together and created the output video. And guess what? I didn't. So, having a machine that you cannot expand the memory to do anything more than listen to music is complete garbage. Complete garbage. So here we are at part two. I'm going to have to explain to y'all in the, in the uh, later part of this. I'll create a sit down and talk video. We're going to move on to the next step. And, and uh, I'll show you what I've done. And we'll get on with that there. I'm a little ticked off because... Those completely, it's, it's complete horse crap. i sorry, I don't want to cuss. You don't know how bad I want to cuss right now. But it's just, it's complete crap to have a machine that doesn't have enough memory, have a video camera and not enough memory to actually do anything proper with it and having to work around. You know, at least with this droid, I can pop a 4 gig or 6 gig or 8 gig or even a 16 gig all the way up to 64 gig. SD card in this thing and even though the mic is crap on it I can still I don't have to juggle my videos around and lose them like that so uh, shame on you Apple for, for producing an inadequate product an inadequate completely inadequate product now back to what we were doing and my glasses are off it's hard for me to see now because this one the my glasses are polarized and the screen looks black when I have them on so Let's get on with this and get it done. I hope I can still teach this lesson adequately. Okay, right at this moment, I have moved on to the stage of getting the canner ready. The beans have all been boiled. They've been boiled for 30 minutes. They're sitting, they actually boiled a little too much. And they're sitting in there. They're still good. The firmness is still good. It's just they tried to boil over. But that's all done. And now someone is IMing me on that crap iPod. So anyway, they'll just they're just gonna have to wait. But uh, this is there. And it's waiting. I'll probably have to reheat it a little bit to make it equal up to the temp of the jars. I'm bringing the jars up. You want the jars to be warm. And there's probably more jars in there than it'll make, but I would rather have more than not enough. So there that is. And we're heating the lids. Let me check the water temp. We don't want that to boil. We just want it warm. So, anyway, there is that. And hopefully very soon we will be ready to process. Let me check the temperature on this. Yeah, it's good. Jars are coming up nice and warm. Check the water temp. Yeah, if it's hot to touch, it's ready to go. You just don't want a drastic shift in temperature putting hot stuff in cold jars. Um, the other trick I do, which helps, is when I put the jars in, I kind of tip them sideways and I put a little water in there, in the jars, to counteract the buoyancy and help them to heat a little better. And when you go to put the beans in, you just dump that out and put the beans in, and that should go, that should do it. And it's like I said, I apologize for the audio, I'm having to use an alternate device to prevent the same thing from happening twice. And you can see it boiled out, and it really, really, really <laughs> messed up my burners, so I'm going to have to clean the heck out of this. So, But anyway, we're back on track. So while that's warming, I'll explain what we've done. The beans were soaked for eight hours, and they were brought, uh, after that, they were brought in here, and they were brought to a boil for 30 minutes. You want to boil them about 30 minutes. You don't want to cook them to pieces. And I'm sorry I'm having to talk loud. I'm trying to talk so this microphone in this thing can, can pick me up. So they've, they've been allowed to boil for 30 minutes, no longer. 
you know, you can go a little under. They're going to cook in the canner. And uh, our utensils are all laid out here, the things that you're going to require. Any good canning kitchen is going to have these four basic utensils. You have this for keeping the crap off the edges of your jars so your seals hold up. You got this to lift the uh, lift the jar lids out. This for separating air bowls. I'll explain how this works since I've got time. Funnel basically. Let me find a jar. When you go to put food, when you go to put food in a jar, you use this funnel in this way. You put this on like that, and that keeps the food from getting all over the edge. Anybody who's can knows this, and you know it's just the first basic thing that you learn. And uh, you put your food in, then you remove this funnel, and even if nothing gets on there, it's, it's a good idea to take a paper towel, put a little water on it, and go around the edge, and make sure, make very sure that's clean, because you don't want a seal failure. Um, and like I said, this right here, I'm having to work through the viewfinder, so I'm sorry about that. You go over here and you reach these out with this. It's got a magnet on the end, it picks them up, and you put them on your jars and you set them. And I'll show you that. I'll show you how that works. You want to bring those up warm. You don't want to bring them to a boil because that can destroy the glue that's on the uh, on the seal. This is very important. This is your air bubble removal tool. It also has a measure on one end. This on this end right here, these are graduated in quarter inches. That's for the head space. Your jars, because you are cooking stuff, oops, because you are cooking stuff in that jar, if I can find it, there it is, you have to, depending on the recipe, you have different head spaces that you have to set the liquid at, starting like one inch, three quarters, one half, one quarter. The reason you do that is when that stuff is boiling in there, some stuff can froth. And when it froths, if you don't have enough clearance between the top and the bottom, it's going to come up. It's going to go over and it's going to ruin your seal in the canner. That can happen when you have a pressure drop. And that can also happen uh, if the food has any kind of oils or greases in it, that can happen. So be sure uh, that you make an allotment for that. You know, make sure that you get the headspace right. I always use about an inch. That's the best. Let me, uh, let me reduce the flame on this thing so I don't cook my jars and... Sorry about that. I know the camera's jerking all over the place. There's not much I can really do about it. Um, so what you do, that's basically what that is. The other method that this is used for, because you want to get all the air bubbles out of this, is you take this, and in your food you kind of go around the edges, and you make sure that all the air bubbles, you move it around until you get all the air bubbles to the top. That, that's what this is for. Okay, so there we have that. And this should need no explanation. <laughs> Those jars are going to be hotter than fire in that thing when you, when you put them in and take them out. So you take this, and you grip around the edge, and you just lift them out. This keeps you from burning your hands and safely handling the jars. Because they will, they will be hot when you get them out of a pressure canner. If you've ever been burned by clean, smooth glass that's very, very hot. It's not a pleasant experience. Uh, anyway, so that's what that's for. And I'm sorry for the disarray. This was much more organized when I shot the first video. I'd, I'd gotten into the process of doing this, and that's when I accidentally deleted my videos. Another thing you may want in your kitchen, and I'm going to be using this here, uh, you may want some canning salt. Canning salt is very good. Uh, for a lot of things. You don't use a lot of it. Don't ever use iodized salt because it discolors your jars. It turns them a horrible brown color. And you can never wash that out. The iodine comes out of it over time. And it can wreck the appearance of your jars. It doesn't wreck the food. But it does wreck the appearance of your jars. So, moving right along. Let's go ahead. We've got the jars good and warm now. So let's go ahead and start canning these beans. We'll go ahead and get this all. i got to get some cardboard or a rag on this table because I don't want to bust those hot jars. So let's, I'll talk about that too. In, in the... All right, so we've got everything set up. Everything is prepared. The beans are over there. So the first thing we're going to have to do now that 
now that the jars are hot over here, and these are, these aren't hot to the touch, but they're hot enough that they won't explode when you put hot food in them. So uh, if we just take this little bit of water that allowed us to heat the jars and dump it back into the canner, and we're going to do them one at a time. And what we're going to do, I need a ladle, which I just so happen to have. And uh, we're going to start ladling the beans and the cooking mix in here. Because like I said, this is boiled for 30 minutes. It actually boiled over. <laughs> and we're going to take the cooking mix and the beans, and we're going to ladle this into the jars, filling it to one inch at the top. And I'll show you that real quick. We need a funnel because we want to protect that lid. We don't want food bits to get on that outer lid. And we just, this is going to be messy. So what I'll probably do is just grab this jar and bring it over here. And we're going to just ladle it in. Make sure you get a good mix of liquid. And this down here, this line is your one inch mark. But I always fill just to right where the funnel bottom is. And that's, that's what you want to do with this. You don't want to fill it too much because it will boil out in the, uh, in the canner. And we just keep going. And I'm going to do this for all the jars I can get, but I'm just showing you all this one. So you get the concept of what we're trying to do here. And just keep on putting it in. I don't know how many jars it's going to make. We had It, it doubled in size soaking, so let's see. We're almost there. We're almost there. Normally, you'd probably take better precautions, but I'm a little perturbed right now. <laughs> Had a little mishap earlier. And then we just follow up with liquid. You fill the liquid to within one inch of the top. And here we go. And this also not only uh, when you finish the canning batch, but you'll want to have cardboard or something down when you're doing this because you're putting hot liquid into jars and you don't want them sitting on a bare countertop because that can have all kinds of bad results. Namely, you don't want your, your jars to bust the bottoms out. And uh, I've had that happen once. Didn't really care for that. Okay, so that one is done. That's a little deeper down than an inch but I've had them siphon out so leave enough space because when this cooks this is gonna froth and you don't want it to run out over the top of your thing so after you do that just set it here and pull your funnel straight up as clean as you can we'll just set it there for now and then let me grab a paper towel one of the things you want to do very very uh, early on is make sure that there is no food debris or liquid or anything on this lid <clears throat> so that one's ready to go all we got to do now is we go over to our pot over here and with this because that water is very very hot and that's the wrong lid I got to get one off the bottom ah. Oh, did I put the little ones in? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Well, <laughs> it'll have to sit and we'll do a wide mouth jar then. So, but you get the point. Take this. I'll just do one here. If I lose a seal, I lose a seal. But you take this, place it on your jar. Now that it's clean on top, it actually has good binding quality, so I probably won't lose that seal. And then take your band, find a small mouth band, and just pop it on there. Now here's the trick. Don't over tighten your band. Just make it finger tight, just snug, because it's got to be able to push that pressure out to make the uh, vacuum seal. Then bring it on over. And this is kind of hot, but hey, we're tough here. Put it in the canner so that that won't go boop on you before you start doing that. That's, ba that's the basic loading procedure. All six of these jars, or more, there's actually more than that, however many will get filled, that's what we're going to do, and all of them are going to be situated. So we'll catch you in the next segment, and we'll have them all in, and then we'll start the pressurizing process. Okay, 
This is the last jar, I believe, the last largemouth jar. And as you can see, the black beans are in. It's filled to within one inch of head space. The beans are actually lower than that. They drink a lot of water. So we're going to cap this last one, and we're going to put it in the pot, and then we're going to start pressuring up. So hopefully everything will... Okay, here is where it stands. The beans are all loaded into the jars, the same method I showed you. It was kind of a hit and miss here. We lost a lot of educational footage, so I'm trying to play catch up. That all has been put in there, and uh, the flame is on, the lid is on, and we're waiting for the uh, venting process to come off of the uh, come off of the canner. Now you want to let this vent for about 10 minutes. This has been going for four or five minutes. Once the steam starts looking like that coming out, and uh, you saw in my previous video how this goes, how, how the pressurization process goes, so I won't bore you with that. Needless to say, I made eight pints out of that batch, and I still probably had enough for three or four more jars, but since I don't have any more lids and bands, <clears throat> I went ahead and resumed the cooking process on that, and I added some cumin, some garlic, some red pepper, a couple other things in there. Uh, to make it taste good and we're just going to take that second batch and we're going to cook at the required time you know till it gets the right firmness and we're just going to serve it up with uh, serve it up with rice or something but uh, the main attraction here this is doing its job quite nicely it should actually that pin should pop up pretty soon uh, so we're just waiting for it to come on up and once we hit 10 minutes we'll pop the regulator on it and away we'll go so stay tuned, good folks. Okay, so we have uh, vented the system. We've put the regulator on, and you can see the pressure pin has risen. And now we are waiting. It should any time now begin to uh, trigger that regulator, and then that regulator is going to start chug, chug, chugging. And when that happens, we'll go down here and... Uh, We'll dial that back until we get to our setting where it holds. And that's what we determined with that uh, dry run earlier in the evening last night, uh, was to, to make sure that uh, we knew where to set the dial. You don't want to run this wide open, because, yeah, it will maintain pressure, but you're going to boil off your water really, really fast. So the trick is efficiency. You want to back it down so that it's it's holding pressure, you know, and the regulator is still triggering off, but you don't want to boil your water off at, at a super high speed. So that's going to be our next go. Something I need to stress again, down here, I'm not going to do it on this burner, but you can see my burner <clears throat> is burning blue all the way around. Never have it turned up so high that you have little tips of yellow. That's making carbon monoxide. Uh, that's incomplete combustion gas should always burn blue and on these older stoves it'll do it uh, you'll get little yellow tips around that and you don't want that um, that's just for your safety and your health um, the high actually on your burner is going to be where that yellow disappears and you have solid blue you know and that's that's where I am now I'm basically just bringing up the pressure I'll be dialing this down um, in a little while once that thing starts chugging and then we're going to let those cans of beans that are in there, those jars of beans, they're going to go for 75 minutes for pints. Uh, you would cook them for 90 minutes if they were quarts, which I could have. I actually had so much left over. If I'd have had an extra lid and band, well, I had bands, but I didn't have extra lids. If I'd have had them, I would have canned all of that in two batches, but we're just going to have to eat what's there and Ziploc the rest up and... Uh, this stuff will be put away for long-term storage once the regulator gets up and we get it canned. So in the next video, uh, we'll talk about that. And I'll do follow-up at the end of this video when, when we finish. There's some things I need to tell you about that were in the... They were in the first recording. But because that was lost, I'll have to do it again. Uh, and we'll just take care of it. So anyway, if we get to the next stage... Okay... And now we are 
up to the uh, pressure and we've begun the 75 minute time cycle for that and hopefully very soon uh, we will have a, a finished batch of black beans and I will move on to the next step what you need to do with your pressure canner when the uh, time is up uh, typically and I'll, I'll tell you then we'll just move on to that step it's better to show and tell rather than just tell so on to the next okay we're back um, the heat the time has expired the heat has been turned off and we're waiting for the pressure to come down off the pot and you can still hear you can still hear a little bit of bubbling in there so I know that food is doing its thing in there and uh, we're gonna see what happens and try to get a little heat in here because we don't want this stuff coming out into a cold room out of a warm thing like that because we'll either get siphoning or we could get an exploded jar so I'm gonna go in the other room and we're gonna move uh, move another heater in here and bring the temp up Okay, all the pressure is now off, so we're going to see what the end product of all this is. The first thing you need to do is remove this, because this thing really hurts when it falls on your foot when you lift the top off. When you open the lid of a canner, go slowly, lift up, and tip away from yourself. To let all that steam and that hot stuff come off of there and you can see it's still very much cooking in there so you got to be really careful when you first open that because it will burn you pretty good and let's see i gotta find the jar lifter there it is we're gonna go ahead and lift them out and we're gonna take a look but you can probably or maybe not hear but they are still steaming and they are they are still cooking in there so you want to use your jar lifter and come out very gently they're at their most volatile stage right now the jars can explode so always put it on cardboard or a towel or something never put it on a cold bare countertop because they will bust in a sharp difference in temperature We'll get these out, and then we'll wait, and we'll see if they pop down, but uh, you'll eventually hear your lids, they'll all start going tick, 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 <laughs> and uh, it's hard to get these ones out, I don't know why I can get a grip around them. Alright, now for the next one. Yeah, they're still boiling in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, they're still boiling. Pretty crazy. So they will continue to cook for a little bit of time. <laughs> now watch the dog there. And they're even popping down in the canner even as we remove them. So they're definitely some have sealed. Wow, yeah, they cooked very well. Now, these beans will darken because they are black beans. They will darken eventually. They'll come back a little bit to their original color. But it's interesting that the color changes as they cook and then will change back. And... Oh, those are beautiful. We're going to see how many of these actually seal. we got eight jars in all. So quite a few. And still had beans to spare. We're probably going to be eating beans for quite a while. Uh, Allison is helping me with my filming. Oh, there's one sealed. Sometimes they'll seal pretty fast. Sometimes it takes them a little while. So the results are not always instant. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. They didn't even overflow. That's awesome. I mean, they canned up lovely. They'll have plenty of liquid when they sit on the shelf. The beans shouldn't drink it all up. Boop. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, it's a little hot. <laughs> Gotta move them where I can get a hold of them, though. There's seven. Seven is what you would normally get, but sometimes you can squeeze an eighth one in there. And we kind of got lucky and got that eighth one in there. So hopefully all eight will seal. And we will have ourselves some very, very good canned food. Yeah, that one already sealed over there. And that's it. That's a bad one, yeah. That's a seal that didn't make. So that one's got to be disposed of. That was pinto beans. Sometimes you get a seal failure and then you just have to dispose of the product and rescue your jar. So that's probably going to be one that I do that with. Yeah, that's a bad seal. And uh, these have to sit until they reach room temperature and then just watch the seals for a couple of days. And uh, they should hold. Usually if they seal, they're, they're airtight. Nothing can get in there. And those jars will preserve for will preserve for about two years. You can keep those optimally. And maybe we'll see one pop down. But, uh, so there you have it. Canned canned black beans complete and I'll do the uh, follow-up here at the end and talk about why I'm filming them with a different camera a few other things uh, we, we had a minor mishap but we kind of got it under control hmm. did you catch no don't don't push them I'm don't not push really them. push them I'm showing the dimple oh Yep. They should all tick pretty loudly once they pop down. I don't know about those large mouth ones. Sometimes they don't make much noise when they pop down. They don't make much at all. Oh, there's yep. one. Yep, that one went. If we're lucky, we'll keep our fingers crossed. All eight of those should seal. And I'm surprised. No siphoning, no overflow out of any of those. That's probably the best batch I've done in a while. Can you call them? Well, that's about it. So that's how you can black beans. And uh, we'll do the follow-up. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. have to apologize for the quality of the video. Um, human error caused that. And uh, hopefully the next one will be better. So have a good one, YouTube, and, and I'll speak. Okay, well, so now you've seen how those were made. Um, and you can see that I'm very tired. That took, a, took quite a while today to do. That was about, not counting the eight hours of the beans soaking, that probably was maybe five hours of work on top of that with maybe a cat nap in between <laughs> but uh, the first thing tanks are in order um, as my better half um, Allison helped me with the filming when I couldn't hold the camera it's a downside of these tablets and and such is uh, they don't uh, they don't really make tripods for these things I think I'm going to invest in a proper camera very soon if I'm going to do more of this so that I don't have these disastrous outcomes uh, with the video like has occurred. And uh, just some things that, that I needed to, uh, to tell you all about. The errors that occurred is exactly what I said in, in the very first. I was kind of angry and I apologize for that, but... All that work just gone down the toilet for a simple error. And there's no way to recover what you delete on a lot of these things. Once it's gone, it's gone. So we just had to pick up and move on from there. So that was a chop. That was a slap to the chops. And I did it to myself, you know. So, but anyway, aside from all that, I'll show you the final product uh, image of these uh, beans in just a sec, but uh, things, to, things that you should know. Why we use a pressure canner, and I should have said this early on, um, low acid foods, you've got to be careful. You, there's a lot of old-fashioned ways to can things like this, 
but they're not entirely safe. Um, jams and jellies and some fruits are high acid foods and they can be canned the old way in a, uh, in a water bath canner and a lot of people use that method. Um, but if you're going to do things like beans and meats and non-sour vegetables, even tomatoes now, they actually are starting to recommend that people pressure can tomatoes because new strains of tomatoes are being, uh, are being created that lower the acidity level in, in the actual uh, fruit to uh, improve the taste, quote-unquote improve the taste. And what has happened because of that, tomatoes no longer, a lot of different uh, species of tomatoes, do not have enough acid to self-preserve to stay good in in jars so one of the ways that they're counteracting that now a lot of the newer recipes they talk about adding lemon juice or adding a little vinegar and that's primarily what that's for but if you're gonna do it the old way now you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to pressure can which is a slightly different method so you have to be careful of your times and temps and there's recipes out there where they've made these modifications you know I'm not entirely sure because I don't do salsas I don't do jellies I don't do jams I have other members of my family that do that I'm primarily concerned with the canning of stuff that has food value such as meat poultry fish and that kind of thing uh, beans uh, protein bearing vegetables things like that foods that uh, they're worth putting on a shelf long term in case of an emergency uh, don't get me wrong jellies and jams are great they have a lot of sugar so they have energy but they have not really a whole lot in there for the repair of your body and the upkeep of your body and that's primarily why I can low acid foods a lot of the low acid foods usually are heavier in food value but uh, having lost the video, we picked up and we moved on. But that's, that's why you use a pressure canner. The reason you use a pressure canner is because in low acid foods, um, yes, cooking it at boiling temperature can kill uh, most of the stuff, as it does in high acid foods. But there's one primary killer that you have to watch out for in low acid foods, and that is botulism. Now, botulism is a very uh, interesting beast because at 212 you can destroy the botulism bacteria but you're not going to destroy the spore the spore uh, 230 or higher you need to uh, cook it at that high a temperature and what a pressure canner achieves is when the pressure inside the vessel goes up the boiling point of the water goes up and also, uh, you have some interaction with the superheating of the steam that's in the pot. So, you are cooking at a much higher temperature, and it achieves the destruction of botulism spores. And that's important. So, when you, uh, when you get that out, that food is essentially sterile. Everything in that food has been killed that could harm you. So they say, if you do it right, you, you follow the right timetables... Canning can be more of a science than an art, i found. There are precise timetables to follow. There's, there's very important rules of thumb. Uh, certain times for pints and quarts. Always respect that. Um, you can do a little trial and error, but uh, be very careful. You know, tr Use tried and true recipes. And uh, it usually will come out just right. Make sure you have a stove or, or a buffet range or something that can hold a constant temperature on it. You don't want the pressure to be going up and down, up and down, up and down when the uh, thermostat's kicking on and off and on and off like it does on hot plates and things. Some hot plates are better than others. But uh, that, that particular one I showed you all in an older video that, that buffet range actually has an excellent thermostat. It holds just like a real stove. Um, really, those that's that's the basic stuff right there. That's that's all you need to know about it. Uh, there is no other safe way that I've heard of for canning low acid foods. Um, 
stay away from methods like oven canning and open kettle canning. Um, they have been proven time and time again to be unsafe. I mean, there's people that swear by them, but this is your life you're betting, and botulism is not a game you're going to win very easily, if at all. You can, you can recover from it with the help of a doctor, but a lot of times you don't, and a lot of people have passed away, so be very mindful of that. Keep your countertops clean. Keep flies out of your kitchen, uh, things like that. Make sure you bleach your countertops, sterilize everything, do it right. Do it right, and you know, don't suffer later on for not doing it right. And that's about it. Just use some, some common sense and be mindful of your safety. And just a simple fact, more people have died from food in restaurants than have died from canned foods. At least people say, oh, canned food is unsafe. You're going to kill yourself. No, you're not. They've been canning stuff like that since God knows when. You know, they've been doing that since long before any of us were born. So I think the practice is fairly solid, just to be honest, you know. But uh, it can be a fun hobby. You learn all kinds of things. And you do get a sense of what you can and can't do uh, by following the recipes and things. You get a sense of what you can and can't do. For instance, the big rule of thumb, like with meat, stay away from fatty, greasy foods. Meats, almost all meats... There may be, with the exception of a couple, almost all meats, usually the timetables are like 75 minutes for a pint and 90 minutes for a quart. And that time allows the food to be thoroughly heated all the way through and to hold the temperature that will kill the pathogens. And that's about it, you know. Uh, I hope this helped some of y'all. You should go out and try this. Um, to recap what you do basically with any kind of dried beans do the overnight soak you can do the quick soak but it's not going to come out as good do the overnight soak for eight hours bring the beans to a boil hold them at a boil for 30 minutes make sure you have all your jars laid out and ready to go when you take it off the stove go ahead and set up your canner put the appropriate amount of water in it and warm your jars then take that, those warm beans, ladle them into those jars. Make sure you have the proper utensils. You'll need a funnel. Make sure you have something to clean the edges of the lid. You want them clean. That's how you hold the seal. If, if the seal is, is uh, damaged or compromised, then your food product can be compromised. In fact, I think we lost one. We lost one seal, and I think it was that one I stuck on there cold. I, I should have let it warm up first. But, uh, you know, put it on there, put it in your pressure canner, bring it up if, if you're, I forget what the altitude is, but where we are, we're pretty close to sea level. Bring it up to about 10 pounds of pressure with the, with the jars in there and hold it there with pints, 75 minutes, quarts, 90 minutes. And once it's out, just, uh, you know, let the pressure come down naturally. Never, ever force your pressure canner to bleed off pressure faster than it's designed to. You can explode your jars or your food product will suddenly froth up in there because of the drop of pressure and all of your seals will be compromised. And then you have to start all over again or throw that whole batch away or eat a whole lot of beans. <laughs> anyway, once you get that done and the pressure's bled down, take them out one at a time, use a jar lifter, don't burn your hands, put them on a, a paper towel, a, a, you know, a layer of paper towels or a layer of cardboard or lay out a rag or a towel, don't put them on bare countertop. Um, I've had the bottom just crack completely out of one sitting it on a cold countertop and it's a mess when those things go up, so. And they'll continue to boil in the jar for quite a while and then when they finally reach room temperature, hopefully all of your seals, they'll make that sound, that boop sound when they uh, start popping down and sealing. And hopefully, if luck is with you and you did it right, and you did it right, um, all your seals will set and you'll have 
canned food, canned beans especially right now, uh, that you can put away for over two years in a cool, dark place. And if you ever need them, they're there for you. You just go in, pop them open. You can eat them cold out of the jar, but ugh, I don't recommend it. The easiest way is just pour them out of the jar, get you a little like one quart saucepan or something like that, and just pour them into the saucepan and, and heat them up until they're warm enough to eat. Put you a little spice in them. I prefer uh, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of garlic. If you didn't use any salt, put you a little salt in there. Uh, sometimes throw a little red pepper in there. Or if you really want to kick them up, just slather you some Tabasco in them suckers and, and have a good time, you know. But uh, it's good healthy food. And one of the things about pressure canning that's really good is the food value and the taste of the food is all preserved in there. It's superior to anything you'll buy at a store if you do it right. Um, I'm going to do another video, hopefully uh, in the near future. I'm going to can chicken. I'm going to can chicken breast. And I'll show you all how to do that. If you do it right, it's better than any kind of deviled meat you can have. It's so soft that you can break it out of the jar with a spoon and it makes chicken salad or all kinds of other things or you can just eat it straight out of the jar it's so good it almost has the it's got that where you just want to bite down on it just like turkey you know it's really good tasting and it's superior to the canned chicken breast you'll buy in a store so that'll probably be one of my next videos that I do and as I said uh, Thanks to Allison for helping me, and um, thank you all for subscribing and watching my videos, and I know they get winded sometimes, and they're long, but there's just so much information to convey, and I, I have to admit I'm not the greatest conveyor of information, and I kind of wish all this had come out the way I wanted it to, but sometimes Murphy steps in, and a little chaos jumps into what you're trying to produce, so... Across two cameras, we kind of got it done. You know, plus or minus a little bit at the beginning. I would have really liked for y'all to have seen, man, when those came out, when they were soaked, and they came out and they were rinsed, they were just beautiful beans, you know. I prepared them, and I set them on the stove to bring them to a boil. I was going to show all that to y'all, but as I said, sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men, you know. <laughs> So y'all have a good one, and thanks for watching.